Okay, so thanks a lot to the organizers for organizing this nice conference and for inviting me. And it's my great pleasure to give a talk here in this conference celebrating Professor Danny's 75th birthday. So today I'm going to talk about the joint work with Nimish Shah on Euclid improval vectors on manifolds. So I will start from Euclid's approximation theorem. Um, so this is a classic, classical theorem in definite approximation by Euclid. Uh, it says that given any n by n real matrix A, and um, so for any capital N, at least one, there exists a non-zero uh, integral vector Q in Zn and uh, integral vector p such that the following um, system inequalities are satisfied. So we multiply a to q, so it's close to the integral vector p, arrow capital n to negative n, and the size of q is at most capital n to m. So this is called the uniform version. And the more commonly seen version can be deduced from this one. Um, so in other words, um, we can view A as a collection of uh, linear forms on RM. So each real vector is a linear form. So you have N of those. So you evaluate these uh, linear forms at Q and each of those are uh, is simultaneously close to an integer. So uh, one can prove this uh, using pigeonhole principle. This was Euclid's original proof. And then in the 1969-1970, um, Davenport and Schmidt studied the following property. So they asked to can one uh, improve Euclid's approximation theorem in the following sense. So let delta be some real number between zero and one. So we define this set of delta improvable and by matrix uh, to be the following. So let A be an and by matrix real. Um, so if one can put a delta here, so note that in Duke's theorem, this delta is one. So if delta is one, then uh, for any capital N, you can find the solution to integral solution to this system inequality. So now if one puts some number smaller than one, then one can still solve this for arbitrary large N. Then one called the matrix A uh, delta improvable. And uh, we let this set um, to be denoted by D, I, M, N, delta. And uh, we see that A is improvable if, if it is delta improvable for some delta. So these are the uh, directly improvable matrices. So Davenport and Schmidt first studied um, these uh, vectors. So their first results is the following. So if you consider real vectors or column vectors in Rn, so each has the big measure zero. And actually they first proved the, this for row vectors. And then they show that, so for row vectors and uh, column vectors, the notion of uh, directly improvability coincide. So the first one will imply the second one. And as remarked by uh, Kleinbach and Weiss, so their proof can actually be generalized to show that uh, any to, to the unbound matrices. So you consider the improvable unbound matrices in this space of unbound matrices, then the improvable ones uh, have the big measure zero. 
Okay. So then, the um, natural question to ask is to restrict the study to submanifolds of the Euclidean spaces. So uh, in 1970, Davenport and Schmidt uh, first studied this planar curve x, x squared, and they show that on this curve, uh, the set of points which are four to the negative one third improvable vectors. So this set has the big measure zero. So then there are several general generalizations in different directions. First, uh, Baker generalized to smooth curves in R2. And in 1990, uh, Dawson, Ring, Victor, Vickers um, generalized to higher dimensional curve submanifold of Rn. So the dimension is at least two. And in 2002, um, Bichu generalized to the N dimensional, uh, to the Vernis curve in the N dimensional space. And then um, using Danny correspondence, Feinbach and Weiss in 2008, they generalized this to smooth non degenerate manifolds in Rn. And they also provide other things. So this, this was one of their results. So, so all of these are for some delta between zero and one, depending on this curve or some manifold. So it is more difficult to um, prove this for any delta between zero and one, meaning um, to show that uh, the set of Euclid improvable vector on this curve or some manifold has measured zero because it is the union of all um, delta improval, as we have seen. So this is larger than any DI delta. So then in 2009, um, so based on work of Kleinberg and Weiss, so Sha showed that um, um, analytic non degenerate curve in Rn, so the set of the uh, the set of uh, Dirichlet improvable vectors has the big measure zero. So by non-degenerates, we mean that the image is not containing any proper fine subspace of R. And then, um, as Nimish has explained in the morning, so we uh, generalize in, an, in another direction. So we um, look at smooth non digital manifolds in Rn, and uh, we consider the weighted approximation. So we also got the uh, same result that it is a bit now. OK. But today, I will focus on the real analytic submanifolds. So all these, so these satisfy some kind of non deterministic condition. And then we may ask, how about the degenerate submanifolds? So let's start from the simplest case, uh, which is a degenerate analytic planar line, uh, sorry, planar curve. So a degenerate planar curve is just a planar line. So we look at this planar line, uh, S, A, S plus B. So parameterized by a pair of real numbers, A and B. And in joint work with, uh, oops, in joint work with Kleinbach, uh, Desaxish, and Shah, we were able to uh, show the following. So on this planar line, almost every point is non-improvable, if and only if this pair AB is irrational. So if it is rational, then you push this uh, so we'll see that uh, by dynamic correspondence, um, every point will diverge. So we get this kind of dichotomy. And we would like to generalize this to higher dimensions. That's the main topic of my today's talk. Um, so let's be the open ball in some Euclidean space and uh, phi be a real analytic map 
from B to Rn minus one. So our first goal is to find suitable conditions on the affine span of image of B, this analytic submanifold of Rn minus one to ensure the following. Um, for almost every point on this submanifold, uh, the, uh, the vector is not improvable. And then uh, our one of the main tools is Daniel correspondence, uh, which I will explain now. So we look at the space of unimodular lattices in Rn. And uh, this space is denoted by Xn. So we have a natural SLNR action. So we just uh, act on each point in the, this lattice to get a uh, lattice. So, and if we look at uh, the stabilizer of the standard that is Zn, then the stabilizer is SLNZ. So we get uh, uh, homeomorphism between Sn and the homogeneous space SLNR mod SLNZ. And in the space Xn, we define a family of uh, compact sets denoted by k sub delta. Delta is some real number between 0 and 1. So the compact sets k delta consists of those unimodular lattices such that the shortest non-zero vector has subnorm at least the delta. So this set case of delta is compact. So this is by Mahler companies criterion. And uh, the second fact is that uh, K1 is non-empty. So this is by Minkowski convex body theorem. So meaning that uh, every uh, module that is in Rn, the shortest vector has a uh, no, subnorm. Uh, at most one. And the third fact is that if delta is less than one, then this k delta has none the interior. Okay, some facts about these sets. And then we look at this diagonal flow in SLNR, um, this e2 n minus one t and e2 negative t, e2 negative t. Okay. And uh, for each vector x in RMS1, we associate uh, an important element uh, in this group as an R by just putting this vector in the first row here. Okay, so now we can skip down any correspondence. So it says that um, the vector x is delta improvable if and only if um, you look at this lattice, which got by um, applying ATUX to the standard lattice ZN. So you get another unit module lattice, and this is um, not in this complex of K delta for any T large enough. So, uh, so the proof is and mentory, but uh, this turns out to be very useful as it um, builds a bridge between the um, approximation and uh, uh, the property of flows in homogeneous spaces. So we can use a lot of tools in Bagari theory, dynamical system to study its Delphonte um, properties. Okay, so if you just write down the definitions, we'll see that this holds. And then um, this is an answer to a question asked by Wuri that, so we actually would like to show equidistribution of push forwards of these uh, uh, curved pieces by the diagonal flow. And how does that imply uh, non-improvable almost everywhere? 
So recall that we have this phi um, parameterizing our uh, Euclidean sum manifold. So here's the proposition. So suppose we have equity distribution in the following sense for any test function f and any subball b prime of b. Then we we push forward uh, this uh, image of the ball in the homogeneous space by at, and uh, it converges to the uh, invariant prob probability measure on x. So if this uh, equidistribution phenomenon holds, then we can say that for almost every point, uh, it is not directly improvable. And so how do we prove this? So we use um, the big density theorem. So first note that it suffices to show that for almost every point on this submanifold, it's not uh, delta improval. If we can show this for every delta, so remember, for recall that uh, the improval ones, uh, the set of improval vectors is a union of all delta improval vectors. So we just need to show it for every delta. So now we fix some delta, and that's little c to be the measure of the set k delta. So suppose for such a delta, the measure of uh, impro delta improval vectors is positive, then by the big density theorem, you can find the density point. So you can take some small neighborhood B prime from that point such that the measure is at, at least uh, one minus half C times the volume of B prime. Then we can take the test function to be roughly the characteristic function of k delta. For example, we can take um, f to have um, value one in k uh, delta minus epsilon, and uh, it's supported on k delta plus epsilon, and it is uh, continuous and completely supported. So then we get a contradiction. So on one hand, uh, we compute the left-hand side uh, in this above e equation. Then it's uh, at most uh, half C as a, so as a consequence of Dunning correspondence and uh, on the other hand, if you uh, integrate this f on the whole space, then it's roughly c. So, so this will be a contradiction. Okay. So, so again, what we have shown that if we can prove uh, equidistribution or push forwards of this uh, some manifold in homogeneous space, then we can show uh, almost every point is non improvable Okay, so now our new goal is to show the following. So is to find suitable conditions on the fine span of this submanifold to ensure uh, equidistribution holds. Okay, so in terms of measures, uh, we give the definition of non escape mass and equidistribution. So we have a sequence of probab probability measures on the space of analysis Xn. So we say that mu i has non escape mass if for any positive epsilon there is some large convex set K such that uh, the measure of with respect to each mu i in this sequence is at least the one minus epsilon for, for all i. And we say that mu i gets 
if we dispute it in Xn, if uh, the following holds, we integrate uh, against some, uh, any test function and con converge to the integral uh, against the, the uniform measure. Okay. And uh, to introduce our main results, let me first give some notations. So we let lambda sub phi comma t to be the push forward measure. So basically we push forward the Lebesgue measure on B to the homogeneous space by this map by sending S to U of phi of S Zn. So we get uh, some probability measure on the homogeneous space Xn. Then we push it forward by AT. So this is this push forward measure lambda sub phi comma t. And uh, yeah, we would like to study this fam family of push forwards. And then we define some subsets of the M by L matrices satisfying certain Dalfontaine properties. First is this W sub R of M comma L. So this consists of all these M by L matrices A with the following property. So there exists some positive constant C such that we look at this inequality and uh, this has infinitely many integral solutions. So if we take R to be uh, uh, M over N, then and C equals one, then this is uh, given by Dirichlet's theorem. And if we take a greater R, then we set up uh, these matrices will have the big measure zero, and actually one can compute the hospital dimension of it. Uh, sorry, I don't remember it, but uh, I believe it was computed by Dodson. And uh, we have a small variant of this set, so we can also look at this, uh, this set WR prime. Uh, it consists of all those uh, Ambal matrices A with the following property. So for every positive C, you can find the solution to this inequality. So one can see that uh, W prime is a subset of W. Okay. So, and also we would like to parameterize our affine span. So re recall that this is our sub manifold and we take its affine span, which is denoted by L sub B. And suppose this um, affine span has dimension D minus one. So how do we parameterize it? We Permute the coordinates, and we may assume that uh, uh, it's of this form. So the first uh, d minus one uh, coordinates are free, and the rest are determined by the first d minus one coordinates. So it's parameterized by such a d times n minus d matrix. So this actually forms a open subset, there is the open subset of the Grassmannian manifold. So uh, we have this parameterization of this, there is the open subset. Okay. Okay, so uh, now we can state our main theorems. So the first main theorem concerning non-escape non of mass. So we have, the following criterion. So this uh, family of measures uh, consisting of those push forward measures. Uh, so this family of measures has a uh, nice scale mass if and only if this parameterizing, this parameter matrix A sub phi is not contained in this Dalfontaine set we just defined. 
past year. So this dynamical behavior of these translates is completely determined by the double fronting uh, property of the fine span. In some sense. So the second theorem uh, concerns equity distribution. We also get a criterion for equity distribution of this um, push forward in measures phi, uh, lambda sub phi committee. So either it get equity distributed as t goes to infinity, these push forwards, or none of the following holds. Or, or some of the following holds. So if, if the equity distribution fails, then it's one of these three holds. So the first possibility for the failure of equity distribution is uh, A sub phi is containing this double set defined above. And uh, the second possibility is that there exists some number field, real number field, so the subfield of R and which is the extension of Q and the extension degree is M. So M is a, M has to be a factor N. And uh, so R times M equals N and uh, the affine span of our cement fault is contained in some R minus one dimensional affine subspace of our Euclidean space R n minus one. And this affine subspace is defined over this number of k. So this is the second possibility which um, makes every distribution fail. And the third possibility is that there exists some um, even number, as, sorry, n is at least four and it is an even number. And uh, d is two. So in other words, our um, the dimension of the affine span is one. So we call that um, we suppose the dimension of the affine span is d minus one. So d is one plus the dimension of the affine span. So meaning we actually have a line in this case. So, but this line will get stuck in some. Uh, something arising from the synthetic group. So there exists some explicit quadratic map F uh, from D by N minus D matrices to two N minus three by N minus two choose two matrices uh, such that uh, F of the parameter matrix A sub phi is contained in this uh, Dolphin is that so also defined above. Okay, yeah, this may look a little bit weird at first, and actually, uh, we'll see it more clearly once we know where it comes from. So, I'll explain the later. Okay, so we have this very nice criterion for equity distribution. With so, if Either of these three holds, then equity distribution fields, and the way actually can show that these are the only obstructions to equity distribution. Okay, so now uh, let me uh, briefly talk about sketcher proof. So, as Nimish has already uh, introduced in the morning. So we, the proof breaks up in the, into the following steps. Uh, first is Dani Margulis non divergence criterion. So this um, turns the problem into study of um, uh, exterior product of uh, standard or uh, joint representations. And um, so a relatively new ingredient is to use geometric invariant theory and particularly Kemp's numerical criterion 
to analyze those unstable vectors. So we said that we see that a vector in the representation is unstable if the GRB closure is not containing the origin, uh, is containing the origin. So, and uh, so uh, in geometric invariant theory, there is the Hubert Mumford criterion saying that if some ve a vector is unstable, if and only if you can find a multiplicative one parameter subgroup of your algebra group G, which brings this vector to origin. So if the whole group G does the job, then there is already a one parameter multiplicative subgroup which does the job. So, and uh, uh, furthermore, Kampf showed the following. So you look at all these one parameter subgroups. I suppose this is your representation and uh, it's the origin. You can have some vector B, you have some one parameter bringing to the origin, some others. Then among all these, there is a family of one parameter which gives you the highest speed. Uh, Kampf defined the speed function for each one parameter. Uh, with respect to this vector v, and uh, he showed that actually the supremum of the speed can be achieved, and uh, he gave a very nice description of all these uh, fastest uh, destabilizing one parameter subgroups. So using these uh, camps one parameter subgroups, one can analyze those unstable vectors very uh, effectively. Okay. So that's the first step. And uh, it is uh, really a very powerful role, a uh, very powerful tool, because not only can we uh, use, use it to analyze non-divergence, we can actually also use it again in the linearization part. OK, so once we get non-divergence, then we use a twisting argument. So originally due to SHA, and uh, so you twist curve or some method so to get input invariance. So roughly, uh, instead of pushing the original uh, curve or some method, you can twist it from the left hand side by some other curve or some method in the centralizer of your flow AT. So by doing that, you can create uh, input invariance. And uh, once we get to input invariance, we can use the uh, very powerful theorem, Mary Rigetti theorem due to Ratner. So to get that uh, the measure, the limit measure actually have very few choices. So then we use the Danny Margulis linearization technique to analyze this. Uh, Limit measures. This is already a very algebraic subject now. Object now. Um, so finally, after using the linearization, then it's a question in the linear uh, linear representation of G, and uh, we just need to uh, classif classify possible possible intermediate subgroups, and uh, actually only need to classify all those maximal ones. OK, so then we um, consider different cases. Um, the first one is that uh, the intermediate subgroup is containing some parabolic. Then the maximal ones are these quasi-parabolic subgroups. So it's a stabilizer of some k subspace of the n space. So it's conjugate to some group looking like this. And so this block you have uh, k by k, which whose determinant is one here, you get n minus k by n minus k block. And this block you can put anything. So this, uh, so this is called quasi parabolic. So if you put star and star here, then you get a par par uh, maximum parabolic. So this is one of the possible intermediate subgroups. Um, and another possibility is that uh, H could be uh, 
uh, normal and restriction, restriction scalar of some GLR. And this K is the K we have seen in uh, the second item as in our main theorem. So over Q bar, over the algebra closure, it is conjugate to the following. So we have block diagonal matrix. So each of these is R by R block. And you have M of those. And uh, this, then you conjugate that by some element uh, in the um, in the Galois closure of K to make it a, another Q group. So give give it a different Q structure. Okay, so this is another possible intermediate subgroup, and uh, the final possibility is uneven and statistic form. So this intermediate group H could be uh, possibly the following. It is uh, conjugated to some sympathetic group. So it is a stabilizer of some um, vector in the X2 representation. So, and we ask uh, this omega to be full rank, meaning you take the half n symmetric power and uh, it is not zero. So for example, uh, one can, so for example, this omega is E1 or G2 plus E3 plus four, so on, plus one, plus one. And uh, if you take this omega, then you get the standard symmetric group. So you can take other um, rational vectors, and which is of full rank. Okay. So how do we classify it? Um, so we can first classify. So the first one is relatively easier, but the second and third one we first classify uh, over the algebra closure, and then. Uh, use some color cohomology theory to classify uh, over Q. So then we get um, these are the only possibilities. Okay, so once we have these uh, equidistribution theorem, then by dynamic correspondence and the proposition we have just showed that equidistribution implies. Uh, uh, Dirichlet is non inferable almost everywhere. So we can get the following mass theorem. Uh, suppose um, none of these three are satisfied. Then we know that on our manifold phi of B, um, almost every point is not Dirichlet inferable. It's not in the act. And the uh, uh, final comment I would like to put here is that this does not seem to be an uh, if and only condition for almost everywhere you could non inferable. So, though in, in three dimensional case, we were able to yeah, get a full criterion for theoretical improvement. But here, so this is just uh, if and only if condition for equidistribution, but doesn't seem to be the if and only if condition for um, directly improbability. So if one would like to get uh, uh, necessary sufficient condition for directly improbability, then one would probably need to classify all the limiting measures. So this is uh, something that uh, might be interesting in the future research. Okay, so uh, I'll stop here. Thank you.